Hello guys, welcome to a 1v1 on Deb and we have the usual suspects, Danny from Australia on the USA team up against Sunbeam from Canada on the German team and it's night time again so this is the second time they're playing on night and we have Danny spawning a regular squad, interesting guy as USA, I suppose it's not that interesting as USA, it's quite normal Dandy because uh, the M1 Garands, it's probably one of the only um, regular squads I buy in the game for an opening in a 1v1 USA M1 Garands are very superior and the SMGs I don't find too good so coming down to the center capturing the back of the sandbags here and sending a few guys down to the middle regular squad with the MG here and we have opposite him a regular squad as well from the Germans of Sunbeam and let's see what happens here. Nice grenade here, nicely cooked. Very dandy style, but on an early rifleman, so it doesn't have another grenade to throw. And Sunbeam gonna return the favor. And I think it's gonna be glitched. He's <laughs> running around, gets shot in the back where the M1 Garand. But the shootout here is happening, and it looks like I think eventually Sunbeam will get the better of him. He's only got three guys left, and they're getting pinned down just by the superiority of numbers. Eastern point though, dandy looking to get this as he's dispatched the final guy of sunbeams so dandy with two guys can cap that flag western point sunbeam here is hiding behind the rocks grenades being exchanged landing a bit short but he's dodged the other grenade as well one on one here <laughs> oh no, Danny, oh, Danny's DCing this. Uh, it's gonna hit. When Danny di direct controls a grenade, it's definitely going to hit. It's, he cooks it quite perfectly. Wastes quite a bit of time doing so, but it, it's. I guess you can call it. Uh, he's a perfectionist in grenade cooking. Or playing the game, in fact. All the minute details Danny loves to get into in this game. Some Mimdo running with a full assault squad, not caring too much about the casualties, just storming in with the numbers and pushing him off. This is the way I do like to do it myself, as you can get a bit lost into the detail of things in this game. Choosing to direct control or not direct control is a skill, I think. And this MG here, as you can see, the battle was lost before it started. You, you notice I did predict this to happen. You can kind of tell when you're going to lose a battle, basically. If you're getting outnumbered, you start to get, you start to see the troops getting pinned down, and that's when you know you've lost the battle. You can kind of predict that happening quite easily. See, when once that starts to happen, you can kind of move your squads elsewhere and be effective somewhere else. So center here is what? It's dandies by a sneaky rifleman. I didn't expect that. I was expecting sunbeam to be all over the center considering how much infantry he has here. Superiority of numbers. If Danny has a grenade up his sleeve here, that'll be a nasty shot. Oh, he does have a grenade up his sleeve. That one. No, he's going to go for this one. Probably that one was too far away. And doesn't take out the unit because it is a Panzer Grenadier. Able to absorb a few grenades. Oh, Dandy here coming at the flank on the right. Unfortunately, didn't hit its mark. It's a shotgun trooper as well. Didn't notice that he bought the shotgunners. What has he got at spawn? He's got one SMG lingering at spawn. M8, how it's a decent buy for this map, in fact. I wouldn't say it's a good buy on a lot of maps in 1v1s, but on Deb, I'd say yeah. Especially versus the sandbag entrenched troops of the Germans of Sunbeam over here. And on the eastern point. Nothing yet from Dandy. Hard to attack now, especially because Sunbeam's got these trenches and is able to shoot down. Needs a hard counter. We also see a nice buy of a M1. I think this is a decent buy on this map. It has a good range. This map features a very open field and looks on the field by Sunbeam. Priority target. Dandy will definitely be looking to take that out with the M1. Looks is going to be safe though when it gets down here. This is a feature of Deb as well, the river way. Once you're down this area here, you can see you can't really um, get hit from above because it's too high. M8. First shot. Takes out a few sandbags. M1, where's the shot from the M1? It looks though has been startled though from the M8 and is pulling back a bit. He's a bit frightened. I don't think he has seen the M1 AT gun. 
Fortunately, I can't see what Sunbeam sees as we are still in the live version of AS2, not the patch. Because the beta patch is still got a few issues. I'm not too sure when they're going to release the patch. It seems like an eternity. Hopefully it will be a good New Year's present. I'm guessing it won't be in time for Christmas. A nice grenade here from Dandy. Admire his cooking skills, most definitely. Uh, M1, M180 gun. Powerless to do much, but M8 gun here should definitely be targeting the sniper. I think Dandy has noticed it, and he's going to fire at the sniper. Or is he? He is. He is firing at the sniper. Dandy did notice. And M1 is also trying to snipe it with the AT round, interestingly enough. I hear some noises of something running away. I think the sniper's actually run away from that position and relocated. M8 pounding away. 7 to 3 at the moment. Dandy's SMG still lingering here. This guy forgot about the war. Lucky to miss out. As on the western point. No attack from Sunbeam. Potentially could attack that to force the three cap. Dandy choosing to pound away at the positions. And he definitely does need a lot more infantry. Right now he needs some line of sight as well. He needs to find that sniper and neutralize it. Hey mate, still firing. Sunbeam has a good spread here. Very good spread indeed. You can see there's troops in here, here, here. Every single nook and cranny Sunbeam has put his infantry in. And it's really hard for Danny to rout him out. You can see Danny direct controlling some grenades here and there. But how many times are you going to do that? You spend a good three seconds per each grenade. And after you've done a few, it's already been 30 seconds. And um, it's just too long. The game would have been over by then. Where is that sniper now? MG, Panzer Grenadiers. Elite marksman on this area here is proving to be a huge pest as also the elite marksman can, or the sniper here can, in fact, support these Panzer Grenadiers, forcing um, all of basic Dandy's troops to go back to spawn <laughs> right now. Even Dandy's elite airborne right now have no chance in this shootout. Danny needs something more powerful to take out infantry. Perhaps a Bofors? Maybe a Bofors? I, I say, yeah, a Bofors for sure. Because he's got an M1 AT gun, which potentially can counter a tank, which will try take out the Bofors. And also, the Bofors can take out the looks, can take out the infantry. And if you think about history, Sunbeam isn't good for buying counters, so you probably won't even buy the right counter for the M1 both M M40 millimeter M1 buffers. Excuse me. So it needs the right combination on the field right now. Right now, the M8 unfortunately is a slow unit to to make an impact. It probably will survive the majority of the game because it's quite hard to kill shooting from an arc and from a huge distance. But it does whittle away the troops here and there. But more, something more decisive. Danny needs a Bofors. Or maybe even an M8. Greyhound. Half track down this riverway. Force the looks out of hiding. But looks here is being very cautious. And now is in range for the M1 AT gun. Let's have a look at here. Direct control. Dandy has taken that out in the first shot. Goodbye to that looks. Now a follow up. Dandy needs a follow up. Something more powerful to get a flag. No, he's just going to go with infantry. Nice grenade by Sunbeam. Always hits always hits before the sandbag. I find Sunbeam missing his grenades just. Conscript only though. Does take out one. Sniper. Oh. No. Half track. Well done, Danny. No, M20. Still well done. It's the buy we wanted to see and it's going to mow down. The veteran sniper has gone behind this hill there. Oh no, Danny didn't notice that was a veteran sniper. He has to hunt it down. Another looks on the field here to counter, but M1 AT gun will be able to take it out. Unfortunately, the M1 wasn't ready to shoot it before. But there goes another looks. It's a good trade off. 250 MP for the looks. 180 MP for the M20. So he has got. Where's my maths here? 70 MP up, basically, from that fighting incident. A veteran Sniper. Oh, that was a 
frustrating moment. I really wanted to get out there and just charge that veteran sniper, kill it. As he did pick up the 50 cal from this M20. Good move. And a decent position to hold this point, but wow. Oh, the sniper's actually been put up all the way up here and has taken out that unit. So it's coming back to bite Dandy. He could have taken that out quite easily before. Center. Um, proving to be an obstacle for Dandy. Needs a Bofus. That's what he needs right now. Or even a Maxim 50 cal. Just something powerful to just shoot infantry right now. Infantry behind cover versus infantry. You're going to have a hard time. It's going to take a while to take out. And if you do manage to take out, you do need the numbers. And you'll lose more than the enemy defending. Nice grenades here from the Panzer Grenadier. Elite tier infantry from Sunbeam. Marksman, I'm guessing. A very good map for Marksman, in my opinion. A lot of shootouts. A lot of shootouts on this map. So coming in here. MG has neutralized position. Sniper still on the field right there. Getting shot at though. Danny still hasn't noticed that it's a sniper over here. And now it's changed position and maybe able to get picked off. No, sniper has ducked here to evade the position. But nice move here by Dandy. He's finishing off the troops many times in battles. You see that this gets repaired and ends up destroying the, the entire army. So good thing he's neutralized it. Sunbeam is proving to actually be very good at grenades. When I spoke to him earlier, he's saying his weakness is grenades. And I don't see that. I see his strengths are grenades right now, as the grenade did just destroy the sandbag as well. Sandbags cower with Sunbeam's grenade prowess, it seems, as well. So what do we have here? The Mighty Croc is in sight. Three-pointer standard by here from USA, and can just flame everything here. If I was dandy, yep, throw caution in the wind, just go nuts and just flame everything to the riverway. Go in there, just careful on the rocks, careful on the rocks. No, it doesn't want to do that. He just wants to stay here safe like a pansy dandy. The pansy dandy. <laughs> that does have a good ring to it. Sorry, dandy, you didn't, you're not really a pansy. Just, try, just, trying, to, just trying to rhyme. The flamethrower will be great, though. Awesome to watch. Because I don't think you'll be expecting something right now. But if you're thinking about finding your opponent, you should always think about who you're fighting. So by the third game in a 1v1, you kind of have your opponent sussed. And if I was Dandy, I'd know that Sunbeam will have 80 infantry somewhere. So good call by Dandy, in fact. If it was fighting me, most definitely I won't have 80 infantry, but I'll have Brandenburgers, so that's the same thing. But if I was USA, if you're fighting me, you'll know that I'll never go 80 infantry, as USA or any, any nation, because I just find them too unreliable. But they do work. They do work. Eastern point. Still nothing uh, from Danny attacking. The sniper is still around there somewhere. But he's getting the center point now, so it's coming to him. Oh, Croc, a nice HE shell. Takes out an MG and a Panzer Grenadier. Oh, here is a Goliath. But it's been noticed. I don't think Sunbeam has noticed that Dandy has noticed. Uh, unfortunately, we'll just see. Oh, what's this? It's a G. Oh, it's a Mata. Oh, wow. It's in range of the Croc. Croc should definitely be fighting it right now. The further you go away, the more chance the Mata uh, has to... Oh, no. It's actually still in range. Just stay in range, Dandy. Dandy should definitely stay in range of the Mata. Because the Mata can take out the Croc at maximum range. It won't be easy, but it can. Mata can actually take a nice shot right now if he wants to. And gets the turret. Yep. So Dandy... I'm not sure why he moved back. Definitely he was in the good position to fight it. 50-50 play styles, but now he can't respond back. As Sunbeam has reinforced well. Sunbeam does move his infantry really quickly and it does flow the way he uses infantry. He just runs at the right time, gets to the flag, runs and fills in the gap at the right time, throws grenades at the right time. He does it right, in fact, his infantry movements. For a player that's only played 75 hours in the entire Men of War series, it's quite impressive. M180 gun could join in the fight though. That's probably what Danny was doing actually. It would have been a good bet to move your croc away, make the Mata come closer, 
But here it is. I think Danny might have forgotten about his AT gun. Combination attack. Croc plus the M1 AT gun. Amada will potentially lose. You can always fall back on the other, basically. Hey mate, still pounding away at that martyr. And center straight away. Oh, gets a crew injured on it. I don't think the M8 can pen. Actually, I've seen the M8 kill a tiger before. I actually have seen an M8 kill a tiger. So I won't say that they can't kill a martyr. But I'd say it's going to be very hard. Oh, he's noticed the M1. M1's going to come to the fight, but it's in a very awkward position. Oh no, it's not. It can actually shoot up, but it's moving behind the hill here. Crew injured. M1 is moving around to here, so he can get a nice shot. I think the hill's blocking it there. Mada. Track damage on the croc. Useless now, because it doesn't have the turret. M1. Oh! What the hell? It's tracked in the perfect position. Or is the turret actually fixed? The turret's probably fixed. Mada. M8. Oh, wow, the Mada's actually bouncing a lot of shots. A lot more shots than I would expect. Tracked, but it's tracked in an okay position. I think it can fire back. Crew injured, nice one there. Allows the croc to take it out. Gives it more time. But the croc isn't firing though, why isn't it firing? I think he wants to use this. Doesn't have a shot. It's not main gun. Definitely be using the croc. It's probably outside its natural range, meaning it's in the white range, not the yellow range. Because if it's in the yellow range, the AA won't fire. You have to actually direct control it. For new players, there's basically in direct control um, a further range and a normal range. So when you use direct control, if you move it as far as possible, you can see there's an extended yellow range which can only be used in direct control. That's one of the main benefits of direct control. MG in a decent position. Sniper from Sunbeam hasn't been relocated. I haven't seen it in the center. Will definitely be more useful in the center right now. Should be relocating. And why isn't this croc firing? This martyr is... No. Oh. oh wow. Wow. Look at that. AT AP shell sniped. And I think the gun may be damaged. Or maybe not. Let's see what happens. Croc's going for the kill. Oh wow. Marta has taken out the M1 for good. And now the Croc has taken out the M1 Marta here. It's gone up in flames. Finally. Croc now going flaming. This is what I wanted to see all along. Look at that napalm. Get in there. Awkward position. <laughs> it's stuck on that pipe. And there goes the Germans running for their lives. No AT for in sight. Stuck on the field already. But now this is a good position to be in. The croc can flame over this hill. Flamers do not care about hills. They spit on hills. And the Stug now is forced to go really close. And he does successfully maybe run in there, get a nice flame. Perhaps if I was Danny, just run in there, try flame him. Get lucky, as you can see, that shot just bounced. And one bounce there, and the flame would have taken it out. Another bounce again. Get in there. Flame this bastard. If I was Dandy, I'd just run up this hill and try flame the engine of this Stug. Oh no, Hellcat. Bad bite. It's not going to win versus a Stug. This is the perfect opportunity. Just right click on the... Just click on the croc. Run at the... Oh no, Hellcat was never going to win that. Unlucky. Oh, not unlucky. In fact, that was going to happen all along. Hellcat's notoriously inaccurate. The statistics actually are that it is very inaccurate. It's more inaccurate than any of the UK tank destroyers. For some reason, that's how the stats are. USA tank destroyers are really inaccurate. In the next patch, however, uh, there's going to be stabilizers for them. So they'll be more accurate on the move. So hopefully they may, that might help the usage of them. But right now they're useless in my opinion. Stuck yet. Tank cam. 
One of the good things about the Stug is that oh, the rocket launcher does take it out. 105 on the field has taken out four Panzer Grenadiers and a Paratrooper in one blow there. But one of the benefits of the Stug, Stug is that its MG can be shooting without it getting shot back because it's just being controlled from inside the tank. Very, very hard to deal with. But a goodbye, 105 here can track track the Stug and make it vulnerable for any sort of rush with a Greyhound perhaps. Long game here, but Sunbeam is almost there. Four more points to go. These two players are very evenly matched, it seems. Center going back to Sunbeam, and he's just got four more points to go. Not long, Danny needs a move. Needs more infantry right now. Needs to keep buying a lot more. I think he's trying to aim at a sniper or something. What was he trying to shoot at before? Not too sure. Where's the infantry from Dandy? It needs a lot more right now. Maybe an extra two squads, in fact. They're storming down the center and capturing it back. One and five. Can you take that Stuka? Priority right now. There's not too many infantry. Oh, there's a few Panzer Grenadiers. But Danny could really fight it off with another squad, in fact, with M1 Garands. Veteran Sniper even capping the flag. <laughs> he's noticed now and he's moving it back. He didn't realize he was using it. Running back here, but he's meeting a Thompson. We'll have no problem with it, though. Sniper here, being very elusive. And he had plenty of opportunities to take it out. Oh, M1, he's shot it with the M1, but I think it's moved position. See, the, not the M1, the M8. M8. Oh, the M8's actually not manned anymore. I'm not sure where the M8 is. There's the M8, it's just not manned. Okay, so center. Grenade wall, dandy. It's got a hold. Panzer Grenadier, it's not going to take him out. But it's been taken out anyway. 105 has finally taken out the sniper. So both of these tanks are being used for infantry support, 105 and the Stug. 105 is definitely more useful at this stage. Right now he doesn't need this Stug, and Dandy can really play at that uh, benefit, uh, that advantage of not needing a tank. If he doesn't buy a tank, he'll be fine. And the thing is with 105, it's going to shut down all of all of um, Sunbeam's infantry killers, 222s, looks, flax. 105 is a great buy, in fact, right now. Extremely good buy. Because he, it's really going to save Danny from anything that Sunbeam can throw at him and also prevent that Stug from being useful. He just needs to get more infantry, Dandy. See, he's going to win the battle here with the support of the 105, whereas Sunbeam has got the support of the Stug, and that won't do much. Infantry, come down. Haha, oh, Stug, nice shot. Grenade here from Sunbeam. This is in fact playing a bit more like AS1. This is this is actually a the last few battles between these two players has been quite interesting and quite fun to watch in fact. Because I'm guessing well, to be honest, I'll be perfectly honest here, these two players probably aren't the best players out there. They're pretty good, but they don't know the rushing meta and how to rush very well. And that's the problem with AS2. Too much rushing. I hope that the good players in this tournament do prove me wrong that we could have interesting counter games like this right now where you have to really think about the buys and have good dynamics. Right now this 105 Stug dynamic is great. Danny was losing all game but he's managing to hold just because he bought this 105 and he's hanging it back here. We'll see how it goes the tournament but this game is proving to be ex very tactical. Just like the AS1 tournaments. Let's have a nice look at this Stug. See here? Doesn't really have much to shoot at. Shoot a straight angle just down at that hill. Ooh, that's the elite... Elite Panzer Grenadier. MG, support infantry. Uh, GG here from Dandy. He's called it. Uh, good play by both players. Interesting game and 
thank you for letting me watch. Good luck to both of you in the tournament, by the way, and you guys will surely do well in hopefully some of your games.